trying to consolidate and keep this stuff from being a mess. It is kind of, it's kind of windy out here. But we're gonna see what these bales are gonna be up to. I gotta go get parts for the new Henniker. Okay, I just drank some from some water and I need to not do that. Anyway, all right, so the Henniker came. This is the new one, obviously. I I think I've said some stuff about it already. Uh, when you go down the road sideways, you put this guy here like this. When you go down it like this, you take this guy here and you do that. See that? Isn't that nice? So, yeah. I'd say that that's probably the better thing to have it on anyway, because... Uh, it has lights when you go down the road. Uh, but the one thing that they did not give me when I bought it, two things they didn't give me. I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit perturbed. Now, whether there's a kit that you buy and put in here, but the other Henniker has a piece of steel that goes from here to there. It's a deflector. So anything that comes out and falls down, it kind of makes it into a tighter windrow. And this one here, I can see it had them and somebody took them but there was plastic pieces that should be on here and they were removed. So I'm a little bit annoyed by that, that they took that. This is brand new. I did get a deal on it. It's not like it was uh, a very, ex well, it is very expensive. I paid $34,000 for this thing. And you know, it's $34,000. You'd think that they would leave the plastic on there, but that's okay. Um, apparently it's an upgrade according to the fellow that did it. I'm not upset, I'm not mad, I'm not disrespecting them. I just was a little disappointed that it wasn't there. We will see how it works because we're going to use it today. Uh, this was a leftover, I guess. Uh, they greased it somewhere in the factory, but before I use it, I'm going to grease it again because I don't trust that there isn't water in those bearings. And I just would need, need to do that. Uh, yeah, this is brand new, by the way. Uh, there's some subtle differences with this one over the other one. Uh, the subtle differences that, that I see are right here mostly and I don't this thing sat on a lot on edge like this and that's where the water laid um, which I don't care whatever it's just a little bit of rust there no big deal and you can see it here so this thing has been made for a while it's been built for a while it's just sitting down there in Minnesota I think I think that's where it's made isn't it let's see yes this is a Minnesota this is a HLI 0005-100 that's the model from 5620 so uh, yeah so this has been made for a while obviously uh, everything seems to be the same on it I'm, this is a little different this is what's on the other one and uh, yeah no everything everything's about the same it's a pretty simple machine uh, still the stupid way of taking it down the road I hate that and I mean I hate that it's still the same stupid way of taking it down the road. Uh, the other thing is with the, that I really think that they should do, Henniker should do, is find a place to put that thing so that it's not just willy-nilly on the ground. You know? I mean, there's no good place to put it when you're transporting it. So what I do is I just take that thing there and I throw it up on the front there. And, of course, it scratches the paint and, you know, whatever. Uh, but I haven't used it yet. I'm going to be using it a little later today, hopefully, when I get the parts. But they did not give me the spacers for the depth, which, to me, I think they should have had it. Um, it tells me in the book, and yes, I read some of the book, not all of it. <coughs> it tells me in the book that I need to have this thing three inches above the ridge on the dirt, the highest ridge of the dirt soil when you're running it. So anyways, I'm leaving now to get the parts. I've yammered on enough. And there we go. Down in the south. It's these cemeteries or these graveyards and looks like somebody shot at that one. Did something to it. 1887 to 1890. That was a young person. 1890. Yeah, 1887 to 1890. Uh, 1901. No, 1889. Here's another one. Revel R. Kellum. Yeah. Born October. 
this is what I want on my gravestone. I want the, a little bit of history, I think, when I kick it, you know? There's so many little things here. Now I'm standing over top of this grave. I probably shouldn't. But this one here, they, they actually made that pretty nice with the bricks. There's bricks all around these. Uh, these ones here are a little bit, they look more modern to me. But yeah, 1930. 1930, George Washington, son of William and Charlotte Jacob, March 18th, 1850 to 1930. That guy lived okay. Yeah, shit, yeah, he did. Uh, 80, no, 70, 80, 90, no, 80. 80 years old. Uh, this dude here, 1853 to 38. That's Matilda. Yeah, Matilda lived a good bit longer. There's a lot of grave sites like this all through the South uh, that I've been, and this, I'm in Virginia right now. And uh, yeah, uh-oh, somebody got a little, here we go, Charlotte. Charlotte from 1827 to 1911. Now these, these people lived a good long time, 80 some odd years old. Uh, must have been healthy down here, I mean, this person here, she saw the Civil War, lived past the Civil War, and damn near to the First World War. Yeah. Let's see what we got here. This was a very well-maintained uh, cemetery, or not cemetery, graveyard. Cemetery and a graveyard. The difference between a cemetery and a graveyard is the graveyard is out here in the open, uh, whereas a cemetery is accompanied by a church. 1830 to 1907, that one. Yeah, we got a lot of them here. Oh, this is a neat one. Yeah, Virginia L. 9, 1886, 1885 to 1886. She was a young little little child, little child there. So yeah, I think these are neat, but uh, not to detract from what we're doing here. Uh, Tim's rolling along with the shredder. Joseph looks to me like he's moving right along with the baler. It is a little damper today than it was yesterday. Well, day before yesterday, I should say, because we had rain yesterday and it's all blowed dry. Look, I'll prove it. Dust, dust everyone. And you can see dust coming off of the baler, but it's nowhere as near as dusty as it was a couple days ago. So Timothy's running a shredder. I'm going to drive out there, get a little closer look, and you can check out the farming that's going on. Wind it up. Oh, good job. Yeah, it's doing good. this nodder last night. Bad dreams about the nodder last night. Yep. When you're dreaming about your nodders, you know you're a hard killer operator. I was dreaming about my nodders last night. Now, you have got to look at your, your knots once in a while. You don't have to do it all the time, but once in a while you got to stop and take a peek at them. And I'll explain why. 
your machine can be running okay and everything can be going pretty good but you have to look at your knots to see that they're cutting clean if they're this one here is getting a little bit of a straggler here that's acceptable but if your knots are not cut clean now this one here is cut pretty freaking clean that one's nice absolutely no frays this one here has got no frays so it's doing good which one was that had some frays to it this one here has got the frays to it that's not bad we can deal with that if it starts fraying or cutting erratic that that's a problem with your twine discs and your knife on your knife arm or your wiper arm if that is not right and it starts getting frays you need to change your knife the knife on the knife arm if you don't change it it's going to start hanging up it's going to start getting mistied now we have been running for the last three days i made some adjustments i made some lubrication uh, changes on the baler itself uh, so that i have good knots good quality consistent knots every time he breaks one of these strings he's got to get out of that tractor climb up on top figure out why it's broke repair the broke the broken part or they or try to figure out the broke the issue as to why they're breaking you can see here they're on the ends and they're very clean very clean i'm happy i'm happy with the way they look they look good but you, he's got to figure it out and it wastes time um, they're going to be putting wheat in behind this corn and with this little bit of moisture they may be wanting to go ahead and do it uh, pretty soon i'm sorry about the wind noise i'm trying to kind of calm that down a bit but uh yeah you really you really need your baler to be running correctly to keep up the time that you need it to be in the field make sure everything is running correctly uh, it may seem that he is going slow but he's counting the flakes of hay in each bale there's 26 flakes of hay in each one of these bales that's what it takes to build a bale i think it could be going a little bit faster but if you do that it can ratchet it'll kick out the bfs and then boom you hear that <laughs> um yeah that's great so there's a lot of things you got to do to these machines to make them run perfectly perfect to save time and to save aggravation a farmer doesn't want to come out in the field in the spring or in the fall for fall tillage after we do this and pull his implement up out of the ground and have this stuff wrapped around you know shovel you know twist shovels and and uh, shanks and things like that they don't want to see that they don't want it wrapped around turbo till bearings because that destroys bearings so if the knotters aren't working correctly and you're leaving strings behind you're gonna have pissed off farmers and they're not gonna want you back they're gonna tell you you got shit equipment and they don't want you back and then you lose the opportunity to expand and grow and do what you're supposed to do so not our health not our health is very important i know a lot of guys think that i am just anal as hell about my balers and getting up their ass but joseph joseph pretty much summed it up the other day yesterday he said dad he said we just spent three hours messing with these balers the two balers we spent three hours messing with those balers doing minute and when i say minute i mean minute little adjustments minute little little things that most farmers don't 99.9% .9 of farmers don't even know about the tricks of the trade and what you do to these balers to keep them bailing like that but you can go to every one of these bales that are here and even in that stack and say you know what I don't, I don't see one in this string if there is a broken string it was broken because of the stack wagon I'll break more stack more strings with the stack wagon than I will with the baler so yeah so here again beautiful beautiful knots okay i've talked for six six minutes about knots and stuff knotter health baler health and you know just getting the job done correctly uh yeah so got a phone call this morning and uh it was from the straw job guys and they were like super thrilled with the job that we did the bales are going in the in the, on the trucks good they're holding together good and uh yeah they, we've got some good vibes from that and they picked up 2,000 more acres of wheat straw there so it looks like we're gonna be hopping in we're gonna be hopping in so i'm gonna get in my little chariot here and get going